Welcome to this series, Road to Inferno. In this series, I attempt to complete the Inferno on an ultimate Iron Man which is restricted in leveling any skills besides Slayer. This account can complete all quests, do all bosses, and train combat skills in any possible way, however, all stats besides Slayer and combat must remain level 1. This is my adventure to the Inferno Cape. Welcome to episode 13 of my Ultimate Iron Man series. This video is going to be quite different from my regular videos, as you can probably already tell due to the fact that there's actually an introduction. But there's going to be no live gameplay. Like right now in the background is just me splashing, but that's from way in the future and has nothing to do with this episode. So what I'm going to actually be doing in this episode is pretty much taking you through screenshots of my six week trip to Europe when I was playing RS uh, on holiday, I guess, which is kind of sad, but I had some spare time. So these is just going to be uh, screenshots and I'm just going to explain what happened throughout the clips. Now, you don't have to watch this episode if you don't want. I mean, some people don't like looking at screenshots and I completely understand. I'm going to try and make it a short video, but the first time I recorded this, it was over 20 minutes. So hopefully it's not that long. Um, I'm going to be really fast, hopefully, but if you don't want to watch it, that's fine. Next episode, I'll try and catch you up, but there are some interesting things that happen. So I think it's interesting to watch, but maybe not. All right. Anyway, this very first clip is me actually attempting that hard clue we got last episode. In every hard clue um, picture, or at least the ones I'm going to drop, I will try and show the steps. I don't know if I remember it every time, but as you can see in the very bottom, it says you've completed one step on the hard clue scroll. I'm not going to bring it up every time because that will get very repetitive. Uh, spoiler, there's going to be a lot of dropped hard clues. But if you want to look, you can see what step I dropped them on. Generally... They get quite high, but as you can see, this one is only a first step, so or a second step, so it doesn't really matter. So we dropped this hard clue, and let's move on. So the next clip is us getting a superior, our very first superior blood belt, also our very first superior, I believe, but sadly no imbued heart. That's pretty much the only thing we're looking for. However, we did complete this Slayer task. So six Slayer tasks completed, and 12 points. This is another hard clue scroll we get. Now, I'm not going to show any more clue scrolls getting picked up. This is just the only one. Every other hard clue is either going to be a completion or a drop, and I'll leave it at that. But we did pick up a lot of hard clues, which is obviously evident with the fact that I said we're going to get a lot of hard clues. We then complete this Slayer task, and we have to drop the hard clue. We then get 70 range. I definitely regret trying to range these damn trolls. They are so hard to kill with range. I should have just meleeed them, but... I was quite lazy and it was kind of annoying to melee them with a very scuffed inventory and like a rune sword I think I had, so yeah, I did range them. We then got a long bone. I think I deleted most of my clips of the long bones. I think I got about five in total, but I just showed this one. I literally just pick them up and bury it. Free prayer experience, I guess. We then complete another slayer task and get black demons. Don't like getting black demons, but honestly, when you're ranging anyway, it's not too bad. You can stay there for a long time. Gonna have to buy a lot of bronze arrows though. Oh, sorry, bronze bolts. We then get 55 Slayer, which would be terrific to get a Turoth task and get the Leaf Bladed Sword. Um, that means I probably have to get the Spear though, unless I want to buy bronze bolts, but that will come later, I'm guessing. So we can finally heal Turoths, and we get another hard clue that we have to drop. We then get another hard clue we have to drop, and another hard clue we have to drop. As you can see, this is going to be quite repetitive with the hard clues. I'm not going to try and bring it up every time, but it does happen a lot. We then finish the Black Demon task, which is pretty nice. Uh, sadly, we can't use those insold heads in the inventory, if you see. You need 72 made for that, and I am nowhere near high enough for that. So that's a bit unfortunate. Once again, we haven't even unlocked the Archaea Spellbook, which I think I talked about last episode. But that will have to get completed at some point. We then complete our 10th Slayer task for 60 points from Enkus, which is pretty helpful. And these are all the insold heads we have so far. So the reason I'm showing them is because I'm about to go into the wilderness to attempt a hard clue. And in case I died, I wanted to show everything I had. So this is everything I had, include the looting bag. Sorry, including the looting bag. And let's go. If you look at my inventory, I have no food. I am not the smartest person, but I decided to go on my laptop, which is super slow, into the wilderness, risking everything I have to attempt this hard clue. So let's do it. We have no food. We kill this Zamorok wizard, and then we get a step that we can't complete. Perfect. Let's drop it. We then go back, get a Fire Giants task, and complete that. We then get another Blood Veil task, which I really do like. Blood Veils are so good, and we get another Superior. I don't go to Koren because I don't have the Teleport there or the Mage Level 2 Teleport there. So I'm doing Blood Veils here, but I probably should have gone there, to be honest. They give better drops, better experience, better everything. 
But anyway, doesn't matter. We then finally go to unlock this Archaea spellbook because we are running out of inventory spots. If you saw that looting bag before, I was definitely running low on spaces. So we get the 60%. I, didn't, I don't have rune light. It took me a while, but you know, it doesn't really matter. I think it was probably still only an hour or so. And we also get the Tele to Korend spell. Sadly, we don't have 69 mage, so we can't use it yet, but that's fine. We can buy all the runes we need for the spells in this shop, so that's terrific. And we then complete another Bloodveil task. We get Fire Giants. We have to suicide to get these um, insult heads out of the looting bag because we are running out of space. So we get them all. These are the insult heads we can use. I would have done that when I had a lot of time to play, like an hour or so, because I would need to obviously suicide, get the insult heads, come back, get the other insult heads, and then pick up all my stuff again. But anyway, we get 50 prayer, and then we get a rune scimitar. It's actually quite nice. I mean, we've got it back from that time we lost it, and it's obviously an upgrade from the rune sword. But we're not really meleeing much, so it's not like it's a huge advantage, but we did get it. So we then complete this task, and we get another hard clue we can't complete. Another hard clue we can't complete, and 75 range. So 75 range is really good. This was my goal level before attempting Jad, because... I wouldn't, you know, getting supplies in this account is very hard, but if I had all the prayer pots before I died in the wilderness, this would be when I'd be trying to attempt Jad at 75 range, but I don't have enough prayer pots, so we can't do that yet. Plus, I'm on holiday. All right, another Enku task completed, 60 Slayer, another Slayer task completed, and another hard clue we can't do. This one, I actually thought I could do, to be honest. I thought I would be able to get there with the climbing boots. I didn't know there was a 15 agility requirement. So this is actually quite bad. I've unlocked spiritual creatures from the Slayer Masters, which means I can get assigned them as a task because I've done the Death Plateau quest, but I can't actually get to them unless I go through the Wilderness, which is not good. And it also means I can't do God Wards, which is pretty sad because I thought I could do that uh, later on, but I can't. But oh well. We then complete a Greater Demon task, and we get another step in the Wilderness. I'm showing everything I have, well, not the looting bag, but what I'm risking. It looks like I'm bringing one food. Not the smartest person, but I really want to get, I think, Black Dragonhide at this point, because obviously I'm ranging a lot, and I was like, oh, if I can get Black Dragonhide, my ranging is going to be so much better. So I was, like, super ecstatic about trying to get Black Dragonhide. We then kill this wizard, and we actually complete the clue. Now, what we get is not what I was expecting. Um, if you see here... We got the Amulet of Glory trimmed. Now, I wasn't actually as excited as I was like the day after. I was like, oh, we got an Amulet of Glory, but we didn't get any Black Dragonhide pieces. And the Amulet of Glory is so much better than Black Dragonhide. Oh my god. It is a huge upgrade over the Amulet of Power. And this is an item that is like impossible to get. Like it is so hard to complete hard clues on this account. Now I haven't dropped that many in retrospect to how many I've actually completed, but it gets a lot worse, trust me. As this episode goes on and as the series goes on, whoo, I'm gonna drop a lot of hard clues. So this Amulet of Glory is like my best item 100%. Like honestly, it's so good. Like, oh, anyway, moving on, it has to be a fast episode. So Amulet of Glory, terrific, greatest item. Really, really happy about it, probably the day after I got it, but still really good. Everything else is just Alcabals, plus I think I dropped the Master Clue. Okay, another task completed, another cow fight task completed. Looks like we got an Ensouled Head, which is pretty nice. Sadly, we can't get a Fossil Island, so we have dropped this hard clue. Another Hellhound task completed. And I thought we could do this step, but we actually can't attempt the Agility course without the Agility level, so we can't fall, it, fall down it. I thought if we had one Agility... We just like automatically fall down, but nope, I was mistaken, so another hard clue we can't complete. We obviously can't get to Tyrus camp, and another cow fight task completed. So if with a cow fight task, I am actually just meleeing them, because there's no point to range them, they're so easy to kill, and I'm not really using food. So for those tasks, I did actually use melee. So the rune scimitar did actually come in handy, I forgot about those tasks. Now, this is our very first task of worms, and they have a rare drop of a dragon sword, dragon harpoon, dragon knives, and dragon throwing axes. So obviously, if I could get a dragon sword, that would be terrific. Way better than a leaf bladed sword, and yeah, that would be such a good drop. So if I can, you know, get lucky, then that would be great drop to get. They also have a regular drop of red dragon hide, which obviously, sorry, red dragon hide chaps, which would be a huge upgrade to my green dragon hide traps. And as I was talking about earlier, I would obviously love to get an upgraded range outfit. And on our second kill, we get the Dragon Harpoon. 
I was, I don't know, I wasn't really tilted because, you know, this was only my second kill. I'm not expecting to get anything on the mega rare drop table. But I was like, damn, if that was a dragon sword, oh my god, I would be over the moon. But, you know, it's still a rare drop. It was nice to get on the account, even though it was completely useless. Uh, I think it's like, look, it says it's a 33k arc, but I'm never going to be using it for fishing. But still, I guess it's kind of a mini trophy. So we hold on to that. And then we like we do get the red dragon high chaps, I think, 20 kills later. So not too bad. Looks like we're going back in the wilderness because I'm showing myself near the lever. Yeah, I need nature rune. So as you can see, I have my inventory and it's congested with items. Like we need to out some of those red D high chaps, rune battle axe, addy weapons. We need more nature runes. Otherwise, this slayer grind is just going to waste so much GP by dropping items. So we need to go back and buy some more nature runes. So we go back and buy 300. Doesn't seem like enough. I probably should have bought like a thousand to be honest. I mean, I have the GP for it. I think I'm just being a bit greedy. I obviously didn't want to buy too many because I do eventually want to get the Barbarian equipment and I can't bring runes into there, so I will have to drop them. But still, that's a bit greedy. I should have bought more, I think. Okay, another step in the wilderness. This time we do attempt to do it. I mean, we attempt to do all the steps in the wilderness, to be honest. But it's a bit safer because it's only 31 wilderness and not multi, plus I have the Amulet of Glory now, so I can teleport out at 30 wilderness if I need to. So it's a bit safer, but I am on a laptop, so, you know, not super safe. But then sadly we get a hard clue step that we can't complete, so it's unfortunate. Okay, we finished the worm task. Um, ranging the worm tasks are annoying because I'm obviously using a safe spot. And with the safe spots, they get unaggroed every once in a while, which means you have to re-click on them. So it's not AFK, and sometimes when you re-click on them, they move and then you get hit, and it's not fun. <laughs> it really isn't. But, you know, the worm task is done, so that's fine. Okay, another blood veil task done. We get up to 100% Arceus Favor just from using Insold Heads, which is pretty nice, I think. We then also get 52 Prayer for Smite, although I'm not really going to be using Smite anywhere, but we still get it. Another Hard Clue we can't complete, another Hard Clue we can't complete, and another Greater Demon task we complete. Perfect. So 25 tasks done for a total of 448 points. Not too bad. Another Hard Clue, and another task. Next clip is 123 Aberrant Spectres. So... This is a task I never want to do. It pretty much only drops herbs and seeds, and I don't really think there's a point for me to do this task, and I really want to block them, not just skip them. So what I have to do is get 50 quest points. So that means we're going on a questing spree. So we do the Demon Slayer quest. We some reason deposit 500k into LMS. I'm sure I had a reason, but I forgot what it was. We do the Sheep Herder, Clock Tower, we get the clay for, I think, Ernest the Chicken. Now, I didn't want to mine this because of the whole nature of my account. So I was going to go kill imps. I thought it was going to take a while, but I got it on the very first kill, so that was quite lucky. We then make soft clay and finish off the quest for four quest points. Pretty good. Then do Prince Alley Rescue and Rune Mysteries, as well as the Corsier Curse. 50 quest points in total. Perfect. That means we are allowed to do one block, which we use straight away, and block the Aberrant Spectres. We then get another hard clue that we can't do, another hard clue we can't do, and another Greater Demon task we complete. As you can see by my inventory, it is still getting quite full with these Insold Demon Heads, and I don't have 72 Mage, as I think I said earlier in this episode, so it's getting a bit dicey. Then there's another hard clue that we can't do, a second one, Piscatorius, and 65 Slayer. As you can see by my stats here, I got 79 range and 66 mage. I think I should have bought more runes and done some maging. I don't know why I didn't, to be honest, but we've got a very high range level now. Higher than I thought I was going to get, to be honest, but I guess it just makes it easier for the account when I actually start playing it properly. Then another hard clue we can't do, and a hellhound task we have completed. Now, as you can see by this inventory, I've got my pots and food. So I'm on a troll task, as you can see by the top left, and I finally decided that I'm just going to melee them because ranging them is just so bad. And I finally have the rune scimitar, so I think it's just faster for me to use melee. Now, I do end up ranging the last few, but I think it was like, it was less than 10. So it wasn't, you know, too bad, but still, I did range some in the end. But a lot of installed heads, by, you can see, as you can see by the inventory, so that's pretty good. We then get 80 range at Worms, which is pretty nice, but once again, an annoying task to range. And we've completed 30 tasks for a total of 456 points. Not too bad. We then complete another Hellhound task and a Greater Demon task. And we drop one clue, two clues. Oh no, I think we're going to try and do this clue. 
But we drop two clues and then we get onto this one, which we do try and do, and then we drop it soon afterwards. We then complete another Fire Giants task, get 54 prayer, have another cow fight task, and drop another clue. As you can see, it's quite repetitive, I guess, but that's just the nature of Slayer, and it's what happens. We then drop another clue, another clue, and finish another Hellhound task, another Blood Veil task, and another Worm task. We get 82 range, and that is the final um, screenshot that I have for my journey. So we did a lot of progress, a lot more than I thought we were going to get, to be honest, but it was still good. So we ended up with 82 range, quite a few Slayer points, but the biggest thing, 100%, is the Amulet of Glory trimmed. That item is actually insane. Hopefully I talk about it more in the next episode, but I don't actually remember. I haven't looked over the clips either, but yeah, such a good item. Really happy that we got it. And yeah, so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week.